This is Abnormal Entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Prime Cutler, an episode-by-episode episode breakdown and recap of the show Very Cavalry, and its breakout star, Jay Cutler. This is Kevin Moyers. I am fresh off of episode three in season one, and I am bothered so much by some of the things that went on. So let's get... Uh, just a little bit of a, a recap. In uh, Season 1, Episode 2, Jay wanted to buy a new house. Kristen wasn't having it. But, uh, you know, he's bored. He's retired. All he has to do is uh, pick up the kids when they're done with school, drop them off in the morning, that sort of thing. So he's looking around. He does a little bit of looking around. Um, you know, and it's easy to do online, by the way. You don't have to do too much. Uh, also, in the previous episode, Gurney walked away from Shannon because she was majorly flirting with Worth, the rich kid in town. So uh, that that continues on as we go. So we start the show uh, with this lady pulling up to the Cavalry Cutler home, and she releases an entire flock of baby goats. And Jay walks out of the house. Like, what the hell is this? There are goats everywhere. And they are shitting everywhere. Like, loading up the driveway. And Jay does this little, like, his little eyebrow up face. Like, what the fuck is this? Kind of look. <laughs> Which is great. He's just, he's so nonchalant about everything that happens. Like, what is this? This is a thing. I don't think he really gets mad. That's the thing. I don't know what it would look like if he got mad. I never really saw him mad as a football player that I can remember. It was just like stuff would happen and he'd shake his head or have a little like smirk on his face, one eyebrow up, that kind of thing. He always did this sort of like neck adjustment thing, uh, like that kind of a weird tick. And, you know, a lot of us have those things that we do at uh, – you know, happen for no reason, <laughs> and that's kind of one of those Jay Cutler things. You do see that here and there <laughs> in the show, which reminds me of his playing days when he just kind of stand on the sideline looking at the, uh, you know, the defense while they're out there or whatever. But he convinces Kristen, while all the goats are there, that she should come and look at this house that he found. He's like, you come look at the house. You can have all the goats you want. She's like, why can't we just have goats here? He said, it's illegal here, but at this house, you can have goats. And she's like, fine, fine, I'll go look. <laughs> so he he takes her. He takes her, and they're driving. She's like, how long of a drive? He's like, not long. We'll have a nice conversation. We'll you know, get there before you know it by the end of the conversation. And it's like a 45-minute drive. <laughs> but he's wearing this hat. I don't know, it's sort of somewhere between, like, a cowboy hat and one of those, like, Australian Outback kind of hats, and I don't know what the hell it is, <laughs> and this fur vest, the man has a collection of, of Marty McFly vests that, uh, I don't know, maybe Kristen, Kristen should sell them in the store, because <laughs> they call them just the Jay's Vest section. Jay's International Vest Collection, whatever it is, but he constantly wears these goddamn vests, and it's the funniest thing to me. But he stops on the side of the road while they're driving. She's like, what? And he's looking, <laughs> and he reaches in the back because, you know, everybody has binoculars in their back seat. <laughs> but, and I totally believe that it wasn't a planned TV moment either because he just seems like the kind of guy that would have shit like that in his car. He reaches back, grabs the binoculars, and he's looking. He's like stretching up, looking. She says, what, what? He said, are those turkeys over there? I think those are turkeys. <laughs> and she, and Cavalry's face, she just looks and she's like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> 
And it's the best. You can tell she thinks it's funny and thinks it's crazy all at the same time. But this is the kind of endearing stuff that he does. <laughs> this is why it's entertaining. It's like, what the? He just pulls over to see with binoculars some turkeys. And she's just like, all right. <laughs> but... Again, it's more, as I said in the previous episode, it's more of the two of them interacting, which I really like, because they mess around with each other so much in in a gentle, playful way, and smiling at each other while they do it, making, like, just faces and stuff, eyebrows raised, like, just goofing around, and I, I'm sure they get mad at each other, I'm sure that stuff happens, but... It's done in such a playful way that uh, you really you like them as a couple as the show is going on. So, uh, and again, I I didn't know anything about her except that she was married to him, except for a couple episodes of the league that she was on, and and very good on those episodes. So, you know, I, I'm starting to like her more as well as as a personality. Um, not super fond of the way she's running her store. <laughs> But we'll get into that a little bit later in this in this program. Um, while all of this is going on, the ladies are at work, and uh, Worth is there as well. And uh, it, it's just, I believe it was just Shannon and Brittany and Worth at this point. And Brittany brings up Gurney as Shannon is continuing to flirt with Worth. So Brittany trying to cut that off, you can tell it's what she's doing, brings up Gurney. And that's when Shannon goes into, oh, he's just not whatever, you know, he's not responding to me. And like, I'm sick of this guy kind of attitude. And then they even cut to one of those little testimonials. And she's like, well, if he's going to be upset about that, maybe we just shouldn't be together. Which is her making a qu- quick and simple, stupid excuse to be able to dump him if she can get worth. You know, like, it's manipulative and it's horrible. Now, I I shit talk all these people because as far as the show goes, they're kind of ridiculous and it's the perfect reality show fodder. It's what you want. But I don't feel any of them are bad people except for Shannon. I do truly believe that she is a bad person everybody else is just goofy and yeah Brittany's a little spineless with the way she runs a business and the, her boyfriend's kind of weird and worth is just a big doofus not bad people N- not as far as i can tell but shannon is this woman is fucked up not kidding uh at 24 she's still childish and probably should be growing out of that by this point but so she does get a call back from Gurney. He wants to meet her for coffee. And they meet at a coffee shop. And this is where the bad person comes out. Uh, we hear the term gaslighting all the time. And I don't think anybody really understands the gist of what that is. People use it as far as the president goes, as far as, uh, you know, different with Me Too movement. You hear that term a lot. But basically what it is, is you making the other person in your relationship feel like whatever you did wrong is actually what they did wrong you're you're switching blame you're switching uh your it could be mental uh conditions it can be things like that and you're flipping it to the other person your bad things get put on to them and she does this with him and he just he bites on that hook and jumps right in the boat, and uh, it's hard to watch. I'm being straight up about this. She flat out, instead of owning that she's flirting like crazy with Worth, she makes Gurney feel bad for the way he reacted to that. She does the wrong thing. He reacts in a way that she manipulates and says, well, that was the wrong way to react to it, and then completely ignores what she did, and now this whole situation is his fault, and he's sitting there apologizing for something when he did nothing wrong. And that's how that goes. And 
Still, she doesn't apologize for what she did. She accepts no ownership of her bad behavior. Nothing. And it's so blatant. And it's crazy to watch. And I'm just like, this. she's fucked. This chick is fucked completely. And this poor little, little dude over here, little sad guy who's trying to make it, he's just fucked with it. So it's it's so hard to watch that. But thankfully... We get into some more lighthearted stuff. And and I don't believe it's going to get any lighter with Shannon. I don't believe she's going to be a likable person. By the end, I saw a Cavalry quick interview uh, where she's like, ah, she she turns around at the end. Like, mm, no, no, I don't believe it for a second. I just don't. It's crazy. But uh, so we go back to uh, we go back to Jay and Kristen and they get to the house. And it's a cool house. It's more like farmland. She's figuring out how far it is from work because she's liking it. It's 45 minutes. He's like, hey, you can you know, listen to your songs. You can make some phone calls, whatever. <laughs> you know, like a little private time to do that. And uh, she loves everything. Everything he shows her. It's got like farm stuff, a little coop for chickens, uh, she likes the idea of having animals and stuff. And she's like, man, I really like it. And he's like, I mean, I've known you for a little bit. <laughs> he's just playing it super cool. But he knows everything she would want in a house. He knows her so well and finds a home that not only he likes, but that she would love. And it's just like, damn. He really, you know, like in the second episode, she jokes around and he has no game. And I'm like, no, no, no. He he has all of it. All of it. He is so smart with their relationship, knows her so well, and nails this house. It's insane. And they get to talking about it later on, and she's just like, hmm. Uh, okay. Okay, <laughs> uh, uh, we can, we can go. We can, she's like, as long as this is our forever home. He's like, I see this being our forever home. It's like you're not gonna want to move in five years. It's like, nah, I, I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> you know, of course, who the hell knows, right? Maybe he'll become an assistant coach somewhere, and they'll go to L.A. or Seattle or you know Denver or something. Who knows? But <laughs> I'm probably not Denver. Let's face that fact. But, uh, uh, considering his history, but, uh, yeah, it just, she, she completely, it took no time for her to fall in love with this thing. He, he nailed it, nailed it perfectly. So that was pretty amazing to watch Uh, that just that complete, I don't want to move to holy shit. This is the greatest house I've ever seen. So, uh, I, I mean, that's knowing your partner. That's really good on him for that that's amazing but uh so then we go uh back to the store and Brittany is going to interview some potential retail associates and the reason she does it instead of Kristen is because they don't want uh they they want to kind of create a layer between the people coming in to interview and the celebrity, which is smart when you watch what happens. So Brittany and and Reagan sits in there too, to kind of help out because Brittany's never interviewed anybody. She's a little scared about the whole thing and screwing it up. And one after the other, like, how do you know of uncommon James? Well, I've been following Kristen since the Hills or since Laguna beach or whatever. And it's just like, no, no (laughs) one woman comes in and she's like, well, um, I'm aware of the Hills, my mom used to watch it and kind of, you know, scream about it and stuff like that. So I, I know of it. I never watched it. I'm sorry. She's <laughs> apologetic about it. And they're like, this, this is good. And she, but she's like, and I, I bought some of the clothing online and I really like it. And I have a couple of pieces of jewelry stuff. And I'm like, okay, they finally found somebody after this one after the other fangirl uh, situation. And then they promise uh, Taylor a job when they shouldn't have without Kristen's knowledge. And she's just not cool with the whole situation. So then they get to the capper of the show, which is Jay walks in, Kristen's getting ready, like dressed up to go out. And he's like, 
what's all this about? <laughs> she, she said, told him Worth is having a, a homecoming party. Or a housewarming party, sorry. But uh, he's in this long-distance relationship with the, uh, this woman he went to high school with. And so he's known her for 10 years, and uh, she lives in Atlanta, so, you know, they do a little long distance. It's not too bad, and they, you know, spend a couple days together. She goes home, or he goes out there and then comes home, whatever, like weekends, basically. But he wants people to meet her and stuff like that, and her to meet his friends and, and that kind of thing. And uh, and Jay's just like, okay, who who throws a housewarming party? <laughs> And invites their boss. And she's like, I don't know. I mean, he invited me and I'll go and bring drink. You want to come with me? He says, absolutely not. <laughs> and at one point he's just like shaking his head like a dog with a bug in its ear. Like, uh-uh. <laughs> no, I want nothing to do with this shit. <laughs> Which, of course, I love, you know. <laughs> and it's so damn funny. And she's like, he's excited. He, he's 25. He bought his first house. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, with his fucking parents' money. And, of course, you see the house. And it just looks like mom and dad's cash fell out of the sky. And, you know, it's this waterfront thing with this crazy downtown view. And, a, like, a balcony over the water. Fuck you. <laughs> and they're out there playing beer pong and shit. But everybody likes his girlfriend. She's cool. Um, and then uh, Reagan kind of says something to Shannon. Because Shannon was being real bossy at work to her. And she's like, hey, that wasn't cool. You know, Kristen's my boss. I'll take orders from Brittany if she asks me because she's managing the store and I'm there helping out. But you're not my boss, so please don't do that anymore. And then once again, it becomes not... That I did something wrong, it's that you approached me the wrong way about it. And that she does the same thing to Reagan that she did to Gurney earlier and flips out and then she's off crying and screaming. If you've ever been through that, and there are you know, men and women that do this to people in relationships, in diff- not just like romantic relationships, friendships, shit like that, it's fucking terrible to watch this. Because you see it doing again, but Reagan does not bite. She's like, eh, whatever. I just... <laughs> and then she talks to Kristen about it when she's asked. She's like, I just talked to a two-year-old. Meanwhile, Taylor's in there consoling her. Taylor's boyfriend is like, I don't trust this bitch. He's just... <laughs> he's just he has that look on his face. And he's not wrong. He's just like, mm, he's watching this go on and not saying much. And then Gurney's in there like, oh, who hurt my girl? Like, puffing up. And you know he's not going to do anything. He might huff a little bit, but that's about it. And it's just, it's rough, man. <laughs> it's really rough. But that's where we end. And it looks like all kinds of crazy stuff is coming for episode four. Like the Canadian is showing up. Um, the continuing drama of Shannon the Horrible. Uh, you know, and whatever else is going on there. And the one thing I'm watching... Uh, as I see how this is all managed, I don't think Kristen is hands-on enough. She only has one retail location to manage that isn't even open yet. She has five employees at this point, something like that, maybe six, and she's just not, she's just kind of dumped it off on Brittany, which I didn't dig. So I, I think she needs to get a little more hands-on, or, or this is all going to be a, Outside of having the TV show as a giant commercial, it's going to be kind of a mess as it goes on. Which, of course, you know, all the producers want because that's how you get to a season two. So uh, we'll see what happens next week. But uh, for now, if you go to bunny17media.com, buy any of the books, ebooks, audiobooks there, a lot of things that I've written, you can get 15% off if you use the promo code CUTLER. If you like this, you think this is fun, funny, interesting, go buy Kevin Hates Everything. Go by, uh, if you have a kid, search for the Book of the Guardians. It's a book I wrote with my daughter, so it has that angle of, of a nine-year-old in it. And uh, it's educational. It's a vocabulary builder. There are a lot of words in there that are more difficult, more advanced, and they all 
are underlined and have definitions in the back of the book. So the kids can go learn the words, come back to the story, and now they're a little smarter. And that's the way we want to be, folks. So do that, and uh, I will see you for Episode 4 of Season 1 of Very Cavalry next time on Prime Color. Listen to more of Prime Cutler and subscribe at abnormalentertainment.com. Find all Abnormal Entertainment shows at abnormalentertainment.com, Stitcher Smart Radio, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and anywhere you listen to podcasts. Find me at Kevin Moyers on Twitter and on Facebook. Find Abnormal Entertainment at Abnormal Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You've been listening to the Abnormal Entertainment Network.